Alright, here we go. Yo, 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 what up, though? Bizarre in the building. How you doing, my guy? What's going on with you, man? Hey, not much, man. Hey, welcome to Mogul State of Mind. Okay. Welcome, uh, welcome home, man. Welcome back to the city. Appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm excited to sit down with you because um, definitely your Detroit pioneer, your legend here, an MC, part of one of the most famous groups ever, D12. Um, friend, would you be considering yourself a best friend of Marshall, Eminem? No, I want to say that. You want to say that? We're definitely friends, though. <laughs> One of his good friends. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely want to unpack your story, man, and just take me on this journey, man. So, Bizarre, you from Detroit, West Side, man. Kind of tell me the, the upbringing for you. Well, I'm from um, I'm from Seven Mile and uh, Evergreen. Yeah. Uh, which mean upbringing? Yeah. What, what was it like for you coming up on Seven Mile? Uh, shit. Seven Mile, wow, man. <laughs> yeah. It was it was cool, man. It was adventurous, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of I mean, I actually uh I was in two places. I used to uh my best friend staying on Dexter. Okay. You know, so off playing. So some of the time I was over there, it was more like family orientated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I was having fun, riding bikes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Flipping on mattresses, <laughs> playing basketball on crates. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I did all that shit on Dexter. But Seven Mile was more like, you know, kind of like, wild, man. Niggas, you know what I'm saying? They be beating up niggas for no reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's more action, man. So, uh, Seven Mile, you know, and it's a, it's a long street. So anybody can be riding down Seven Mile. Yeah. On some bullshit. You know <laughs> That's saying? real. So, like, it ain't like, you know, any other hood where you know this my hood, these these niggas, you you know, anybody can be riding out something. So That's real. It was cool though. Now growing up in Detroit, your your teenage years was nineties, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah. you. Um what was big and what was popular in the city during the nineties? And and was there any hip hop artist in the city that was that was popular at that time? In the nineties, um for hip hop? Yeah. Uh, shit, really, like slum, slum village. Okay, definitely popping. Um, Jay Dilla, he 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 was my most popular person in our circle. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying a producer, you know, the great super Jay producer for yeah, sure. Yeah, he was the most popular because it's like we was hearing all them songs and shit before it was coming out. Like, uh, can't keep running away by Far Side. They lost soul, the stakes is high. We heard all that shit before it even came out. Mm. So, you know, that was one of my inspiration. He the first, he the first dude I ever seen in the Range Rover. Damn. You know, he pulled, I remember he pulled up to Hip Hop <laughs> Shop with his new Range. You know what I'm saying? Like, so Jay Dilla, yeah, he, he was definitely our inspiration. Got you. Now, for you, you grew up in a household. Your, your pops died when you were super young, right? Yeah, at four. Uh, do you really have any memories? <laughs> Uh, uh, your dad, being, being that you were so young? Uh, no, no, uh, no, no memories at all. You know, and that's one of my biggest fear, man. I got a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. And I was yeah. like, man, I don't want to leave right now because yeah. I feel like they going to be like a yeah. blip. I'm looking at yeah. pictures or something. Um, yeah, kids' mind can change so quick. Yeah, for Two sure. Years, they got to watch you. <laughs> so growing up with your mom, man, and things of that nature, like how did you, because usually people get introduced to hip-hop from like an older brother or dad or a cousin, something like that, who introduced you to hip hop? Um, <clears throat> my music teacher introduced me to hip hop. Mm. I was in the fifth grade. I was in the Glee Club, and um, he wanted somebody to uh, rap this part for uh, this the Dr. Martin Luther King play we had. So, uh, shit, don't nobody raised their hand up, so <laughs> I took a shot at it. You know what I'm saying? I, I liked the reaction I got. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So after that, man, I just started writing raps. Okay. So, so. Do, do you remember that rap? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't remember it a little. I don't remember it. <laughs> but my sister remember it. Okay. If, if I call my sister right now, she can say, she can say the whole motherfucking rap, line for line. So here it is. You you do that play, and uh, you rap, and then they start bringing you in to do more rapping parts and other. Yeah, yeah. Like, at, uh, basically, after that, after uh, after I did that that play, or that, then they gave me in Halloween, Thanksgiving. Yeah. So I just became the the rapper, the official rapper for the school. 
And so it was a teacher that gave you the name. Yeah, Mr. Johnson. Shout out to Mr. Johnson over there at Pitcher Elementary. Okay. If you from Seven Mile, you know about Pitcher. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, he, he yeah, called you son. Bizarre Kid? Is that what he was calling you? No, no okay. actually it wasn't him that gave you that name. It okay. was another teacher, uh, Mr. Styles. He gave you the name Bizarre Kid. What was what was the meaning behind that? Why? Um, because I used to be in class, like not paying attention, basically writing raps for real, for real, like just writing raps in my head, and just like <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know, you know, you be in the zone and shit. Like what fucking that thing about math? And I'm in, like thinking about lines and shit. He like, was like, look, this this guy's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is a bizarre kid right here. So you know. And I was a class clown too, man. Oh man, I was a class clown, man. I was a class clown, man. I remember my sister, my sister, uh, my mother put my sister in the same class as me, thinking that you know she could tell on me and shit, man. I started getting my sister in more trouble, man. Oh she, shit, she wasn't even like that. She was a straight student, man. Uh, wait, how do y'all end up in the same class together? Um, cause I got held back one year you know what <laughs> okay. when I was young. You got you. So, uh, we ended up being in the same grade. Okay. Like elementary school. Shit. Yeah. How was your mom dealing with you being the class clown? Oh man. She ain't like the shit. Man. <laughs> I was, I was a cool class clown though. Like, okay. you know, I don't know, man, for some reason, I, I know every year, like at the end of the year, when my report card, when your report card come in the mail. Yeah. My shit didn't come for some reason. It's out of every there. year, so it was like she used to be like, "What? What is your grades? What? What? You know what I'm saying? Because she ain't had no type of analytics on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as like, you know, when you get like an A three, yeah. you talking too much in class. Yeah, all the, time. the citizenship grade. Yeah, my shit used to say incomplete. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so here it is, man. You you get into music like. When did you do, like the day that you decided to start writing your own shit though after performing the 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 plays and stuff at school? Um shit, probably right after that. I oh, started, right after okay. that. Yep. Got yep. you. Yep. Now beats and stuff, like how were you getting them? Cause I remember my older brother, he would rap, he would go to like Sam Goody and get a bunch of instrumentals uh -huh. and stuff. And I had a karaoke machine and he'd throw the tape in there, play the instrumental and record it. So how did you start like picking beats or getting music? To write to, or was it just acapella? You just, um, yeah, I started battling at first. Okay, around my neighborhood, probably like at ten. Damn, I started battling other rappers. You know, people. I was the guy that you always wanted to see beats or come get. So they they was coming to get me. Come, 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 come get Pete. They, that's, that was my that was my name, Sweet Pete, back in the day. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was my first rap day. <laughs> I was bogus as hell. Sweet, uh, <laughs> Sweet Pete. I had Sweet Peak on the back of my uh, jersey and shit. Yeah. I had like a Mickey Mouse outfit on with a rhyme song shit. I'm talking about some ancient shit, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was the I was the battle rapper. And then I um then I got in a group with my boy Mikey. Okay. Shout out to Mikey. And he was a producer. Mm. So he he started making our beats. Okay. So because people don't realize like back back then to get on as a rapper, you was supposed to be a good battle MC. Yeah. Be able to hold your own before yeah. you can become this national sensation. Why? Why? Um, had you just to jump around a little bit when you got in the industry, was there ever a time you was in a room and had to do epic battles against other artists in the industry? Like we used to hear, like was it DMX and somebody was battling out mm -hmm. for a deal? Like they was in there for hours just rapping back and forth. Did you ever battle anybody in the industry just in the room? That, that I battled Marshall before. Damn. Yeah, we, we you know we always used to spar and play around. You know what I'm saying? We all didn't battle before, so I didn't battle Swift before. Okay, we bat we actually battled at the hip hop shop. Oh shit, that's hard. You know what I'm saying? Against each other. You know what I'm saying? Because at the hip hop shop, when we used to have the battles. We put everybody's name in a hat, mm. shake it up, and then whoever two names come out, y'all got to battle with each other. And when when y'all battle freestyle, was it this off the dome? Yeah. Back then, freestyling meant. Nigga, it's yeah. coming out as it yeah. is because now freestyle today mean is something pre written for a battle, right? And you right. going back and forth. So battling right. wasn't like that back then. No, nah, but I used to I used to have a couple lines for niggas just in case <laughs> I ever run into you in the, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the battle. I ain't gonna front my move on that, but like most of the, for but for the majority though, it was off the dome. Yeah. It was there any uh, time that you felt like you got Marshall in the battle? Um. 
No, I never really got them. You know what I'm saying? We we just played around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just, we, we, no, just throwing in the house. I never battled them like in a, in like a real setting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, yeah, we we did have some some nights. <laughs> <laughs> got you. So here it is. You join the group. Your man's he he producing and things of that nature. When did the hip hop shop start popping up on the scene? Hip hop shop was like what was it? Oh. 95, 94, 95. Okay. Yeah. And, and for those who may not know what the hip hop shop is, kind of explain what hip hop shop was. The hip hop shop was a clothing store. It's on Seven Mile in uh, Greenfield. Uh, it was owned by this clothing designer. What up, Mo? Maurice Malone. Remember Maurice Malone yeah. back in the day? Hell yeah. yeah. So before he blew up, he had a little clothing store with a couple shirts in there, a little storefront, and uh, proof was working there, so I guess he decided to throw an open mic. Mm. And uh, motherfuckers just started growing. Damn. To the point where it was so serious that niggas would take off work. Like, I, when I used to go to job interviews, I'd tell them, hey, I can't even work Saturday. <laughs> you know, he let them know. Like, <laughs> you gotta get to the hip-hop shop. So <laughs> that's how serious that shit was. So yeah, that, shit, that shit took off. So Proof is the one that actually put together the, the hip-hop. Yeah, wow. And then by Proof, Proof, he kind of bridged the gap too, because him being so multicultural, see, Proof grew up half of his life on um, on Runyon Ave and Seven Mile and Beale. Then he spent other, other half of his life on Santa Barbara. Mm. You know what I'm saying on the West Side. So he had he knew niggas from both sides. That's so when he started the hip hop shop. He brought all the niggas mm. together. So you know, a lot of people I wouldn't have never ran across in life if it wasn't for the hip hop shop. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? So he knew all the rappers from the east side. He knew all the rappers from the west side. So they all came at the, at the hip hop shop. So, so the battle scenes where we seen in the movie Eight Mile is that based off the, the shop? Yeah. Or, yep. Okay. It's based off really or not blend. the shop, this the city. Period. Okay. But, back back okay. then, back then. I mean, it's it's kind of like the same thing now, but like not violent. So you know, hmm. out in Detroit, you know, we got. Crews, band gang, you know what I'm yeah. saying? This crew, that crew. It's, it was the same shit, but more of a battle crew. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? But it's the same shit, like, on some gang shit. Like, if we don't like y'all, we might beat y'all up somewhere or some shit. But it was more, like, battle rappers. Yeah. But it was, you know, the same concept. So, back then, you know, yeah, uh, niggas were running the other crews. and But, you know... But we run the other crews, they have to battle each other or mm. some shit. You know what I'm saying? So you get to the you in the hip hop shop. Um, you end up meeting proof. Kinda tell me your your first run into proof. Proof, what was that like? My first run into proof. Um uh, I, I came to the hip hop shop. Um I see some dudes rapping and I uh, jumped in the cipher with them. Actually, uh I'm shout out to my man uh Phil Pot, R. P. Phil Pot. I mean, him was rapping. That's the first person I was rapping with. We was in the cipher. Proof was a, a top DJ in real high. Yeah. And he, he, you know, he seen me getting some reaction. So he was like, oh, shit. Don't let me have to come down there. <laughs> and this nigga jumped, like, from this motherfucking balcony, pretty pretty tall, and jumped down. And he jumped in the cipher. Me and him started rapping and shit. Mm. And he was like, kind of dope, bro. He said, what's your name? I was like, Bizarre Kid. He's like, bizarre kid. I was like, yeah. He's like, no, nah, bro, this Detroit, we ain't, this ain't New York. You, we don't use kid. Your name is bizarre. That's been my name ever since. Damn, so you <laughs> took it right then and just bizarre. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said that shit with so much conviction. <laughs> and now, how, how long are you going to the hip hop shop before you, you meet Marshall? Um, Probably a couple months. A couple months. Yeah, about a couple months because... He was he was like a mystery man. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like he so it was open mic every week. But the battles is probably like every two months. And that's what he he only came to the battles. Gotcha. And he was the champion of the battles. So like he didn't have to he didn't actually have to be in the battle. So the battle would probably be like 30 rappers. Process of elimination round mm. by round, round by round. And then whoever wins that battle gets the battle marshal. Damn, so he just sitting up there. <laughs> Royalty. 
That's big dog. He he ain't even out. He ain't even watching the battles. He mm. in the back in a in a VIP suite. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Chilling. Right. How, how did he get his name on the scene to big up? Was it simply from the hip hop shop, or he was already going around? Oh uh, yeah, he had a couple couple albums out. You know, what I'm okay. saying? I don't know what his fan base was like, but I know like people people knew him from um, battles, and then like we started hitting the open mic circuit. Yeah, so I, I remember I, I was his hype man for a couple of them shows, and you know I'm talking about like Ratchet Hood. Hood shit like yeah. you know Ebony Showcase, motherfucking See No Lounge, you know what I'm saying? That type of shit. Yeah. So we were going there. And it was just like the movie White Man Can't Jump. Like we go in there, <laughs> motherfuckers is looking. What the fuck this white boy about to do, man? This shit, yeah. You know, very reluctant. And after about eight bars, they hear they like, damn, this white boy cold. And after that, we rocking from that point on. Got you. So here it is. You've been going to hip hop lab. Hip hop lab, hip hop shop for a moment, <laughs> for a minute. Um, give me the day you meet Marshall. The day? Yeah. Uh, do you, do nah, you remember the day? Did. I mean, not the date, like <laughs> on this day. No, I don't but remember do, the day. No, but I just remember uh, uh, the first, like a battle he came to. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember him being in the back I, in the VIP suite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you was watching the chat? Yeah, because I was working there. So okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was going back and forth and seeing him back there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then he like. If he heard me battle and shit, he, he, wanted, he wanted to fuck with me. Yeah, gotcha. start. That's how our relationship started from there. Although you was working there, did you ever jump into the battles? Oh yeah, hell yeah, I was in every battle. So you never made it up to battle Marshall? Nah, nah, hell nah, <laughs> nah, nah. I was, I, I was a mid. You know, I was a two or three rounder. I, I definitely want to go out in the first round. Yeah, but second, I might. Mm, I'm still jabbing third round. My ass out of there. <laughs> I probably didn't ran out of raps by the end. Because I'm you know feeling like, yeah, if you rapping so much, bro, like, it's, yeah. it's a lot. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So here it is. Um, How did y'all start linking up? Like, you, uh, Marshall Proof, how did y'all start clicking up? Because, I mean, all the rappers that come through there, what made y'all <clears throat> jail together? Wait, that's jail. Uh, well, Proof started, he he, he started he, he started D12, basically, Dirty Dozen. Mm. So, uh, probably 12 rappers with, uh, you know what I'm saying? 12 rappers that are from the city, but like from different crews, like an all-star team. Yeah. Like basically, this is a little project we're doing. You don't have to leave your group. Just, you know what I'm saying? Do this shit for fun. And we just never could get 12 niggas to commit. Yeah, so, they got to be hard. Yeah, so it ended up being six of us. Six of y'all. So it was, it was who, you, Proof, um, it was me, Proof, uh, Deny, Mr. Porter, Conniver, Swift. Got you. Now, yeah. tell me about Bugs. Is yeah, but yeah, R.P. Bugs, and then uh, uh, my, my my man IQ was in it too. Got you. Yeah. How long? Cause cause did Bugs ever? He he never ever got a been a chance to be on the album with y'all, right? No, no. Can you tell me this, a little story, a backstory of him, <laughs> real quick? Well, Bugs, uh, I I basically would uh. That was my, my road dog, you mm. know what I'm saying? Um, he basically was uh, there with us through the, through the process. Um, I went to Chicago, and I had a, uh, Marshall had a show there, and uh, he asked me to stay uh, after the show and go on the road with him, and Bugs is with me. So I'm like, damn, man, I'm uh, they, they want me to finish the tour. He was like, man, hell yeah, that's good. I'm going I'm to I'm rock with you. So I left him. He went back to, to Detroit. And uh, at the end of the tour, uh, we had a show uh, um, in Detroit. And uh, we had been, me and Proof had been on the road for like two months. So he was like, hey, man, we pulled up to uh, the State Theater. And I remember Proof jumped in the middle of Woodward and kissed the ground. Like, oh, my God, we <laughs> home, we home. <laughs> and uh, he was like, busy. Make sure you, make sure you call Bugs and tell him to... Be ready for this, you know what I'm saying? The show we got tonight. I was like, oh, word. And um, I went home, probably like five, six hours later, my auntie told me uh, I had a phone call. I got on the phone, it was proof. He's like, you talked to Buzz today? I'm like, no. Nah. He's like, I'm about, I was like, I'm about to call him, you know, and tell him to be at the gig. 
So I, I end up nodding off back to sleep. Proof called me again. What's up? You talked to Buzz today? I'm like, damn, man, I forgot. I'm about to call him now. He was like, man, I just called his house. They said he deceased. Damn. I'm like, what? I'm like, nah. He's like, proof. He's like, call and see. I called and people was like, he was deceased. So, yeah, man. So, uh, he knew about us getting a deal. Actually, he got killed going to celebrate. Damn. Because he was supposed to meet us back in Detroit at the show. And then, you know, he was supposed to to uh, sign the deal. Yep. Was it him, like, tied into some street shit? Just wrong place, wrong time? Or? He got killed on Belle Isle. Damn. It was a uh, senior senior skip day. Skip day. I remember senior skip day. Senior skip day. And it was over a water gun. I don't know. You might have heard about it back in the day. And uh, I guess Bugs and his uh, his boy was riding around Belle Isle. And uh, his homie, uh, I guess these dudes were squirting girls with water guns. Or bleaching it, though. I, heard, I seem like I remember and, that. And, uh... He hit, he hit this girl with a, she had a Coogee sweater on. And uh, it was Bug's cousin. So I guess she was arguing with some dude, whatever. They seen the chaos, stopped. You know what I'm saying? I guess they got to arguing. Bugs took off on him, because that's what Bugs do. <laughs> Bugs took off on him, gave him a quick three piece. And uh, from what I seen on the news, Bugs grabbed the water gun and like broke it over his head. And he was walking away back to the car. And then dog pulled out and shot him in the back. Damn. Uh, Damn, sorry to hear that. Rest in peace, Bugs. Yeah. Okay. So here it is. It's 12 of y'all. Six of us. Six of y'all. <laughs> dirty dozen. Um, and so the goal, it seemed like it was to kind of, I don't want to say replicate or emulate, but Wu-Tang was big too at that time. So, you know, these big old super rap crews and all these personalities, if that was something y'all was trying to achieve, that's what Proof was trying to achieve? or um, I don't know. It, it definitely yeah. could have been a big influence on us, though. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, we definitely was big Wu-Tang fans and shit. But, you know, the word baby Wu-Tang was thrown out there a lot. Okay. But uh, I think Proof was just trying to put everybody on, though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because B12 is, you know, a bunch of little subgroups, you know, we had the brigade in there. I had a solo, mm -hmm. you know, proof was solo, you know what I'm saying? So I think he was just, just trying to put as many people on as he could. Got you. Okay. So since y'all couldn't get the 12 mem members, proof came up with the idea, let's create alter ego. Yeah. Can you go through pretty much everybody alter ego and did you have one? No. Uh, I never found out who I really was. <laughs> I think me being a bizarre is a motherfucking enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got so many goddamn personalities. So, but I think mine was Peter S. Bizarre, but I never really used it like that. Mm. But M, M was go, he was gun ho for the shit. Like, I remember he made me get serious about it. So basically, his alter ego was Slim Shady. Mm. And I remember we was at St. Andrews one day. He was like, Man, how serious y'all is about this shit? We was like, what? He's like, how serious is y'all about this shit? And he rolled up his sleeve and he had a Slim Shady tattoo. I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So, and like, he was like the first to like buy into the Argo. Yeah. Watch the ego shit. It's crazy though. Like, you look at like little things that happen that makes a big influence. Like, All right, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if. Y'all got the 12 members and the idea to create alter egos never came about. Maybe Slim Shady right. would have never been here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just those yeah. little nuances that cause, that have big impacts on the culture for sure. Yeah. Okay, so here it is. Slim Shady here. You haven't figured out your alter ego, but D12 or Dirty Dozens is here. Yeah. When did y'all get forced to condense it from Dirty Dozens down to the number D12? I mean, to the, to the, Name D12. Um, when, we, when we got signed to Interscope, hmm. we, uh, they came back and told us, hey, the name uh, Dirty Dozen is, is already been taken. It's a rock band out of Maryland. Gotcha. So we, we had to figure out a way to mean Dirty Dozen, but I would say it. So, so D12. Yeah. But you'd have to prove again. That's hey, the, shout out to him. That's the genius. <laughs> so this... Is this deal with D12 is the one that just signed after Marshall already been signed to Drano? 
or is this name changed? Y'all got, or did y'all yeah, get? Yeah, okay, we changed it right when we got signed. Yeah. Okay, I was uh, just trying to make sure it wasn't a deal before yeah, that. Okay, no, nah, no. Nah. All right, so here it is. Y'all doing y'all rap thing, but now you're in this motion where we're having to move from Detroit back to to Texas, yeah. back to Detroit, back and forth. Right. Tell me how you deal with that, because here go your group, you got your crew, y'all trying to make moment, you know, make momentum, and next thing you know, you yeah. got to move to Texas. Why yeah. Texas? What happened? My my mom is uh, she she a moving fanatic, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So something in, something in her brain, she could decide if she wanted to be in Detroit or Texas. So uh, my grandmother there, uh, auntie's uncles is there. So we we went back a a, a couple of times. Like I remember, like prairie to elementary, we stayed for a year. We she get homesick, we go back to Detroit, stay another <laughs> year. So. I think I was like 18, 19, D- D12 was popping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We we really was circulating. And I came home from work one day. And my mama was like, hey, we moving back to Texas. I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm mad as hell, but yeah. I, I ain't old enough to, you know, fend on myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm only like 18 and shit. So yeah. I had to go. So that was, that was like the roughest move, man. Because like I was, you know, I knew... I knew what was waiting for me in Texas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I think I was working at a hospital in Bark Springs. Like, I knew, like, my life in Texas wasn't as as fast as it was in Detroit. You know what mm. I'm saying? So I'm like, damn. I mean, I didn't even know no rappers out in Texas at the time. I feel it. So, I'm out there just, like, straight up civilian life type <laughs> shit. And I remember I'm bored as hell one day, and I'm, like, doing these rounds around the uh, hospital and shit. And my... Secure, I mean, my uh, um, manager called me on the uh, walkie-talkie, told me to come to the come to the security booth. I came out there. I was like, hello? Like, I wonder, like, who the fuck calling me at work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hello? He was like, what's up, man? And it, and it was, it was, uh, it was Marshall playing around and shit. <laughs> and he was like, yo, man, I'm out in L.A., man. I just sounded Dr. Dre. I'm like, what? He's like, hell yeah, I just sounded Dr. Dre. I'm like, man, you lie. He's like, bro, I'm dead serious, man. I want to fly you out. I was like, word. I'm like, hell yeah. So um, I, I got off the phone, um, told my supervisor I quit, and shit. I ain't never looked back after that. Yeah. Uh, now, now, hearing Eminem's story, uh, his, how his shit was moving around, you see people like Fat Joe said Eminem demo came across his desk. Yeah. And he passed up yeah. on Eminem. Yeah. And, you know, how do you feel like was Eminem really out really working his demos like that or man, what hell yeah man we man we, it started off grind I, I took Marshall to New York for his first trip mm. I was a I was a grinder you know but so you know he was down for the grind so man I'm talking about bro we we, we was we was in Jersey a lot you know what I'm saying shout out to the outsiders that was like you know the first first crew of rappers that we was really became family with then we was uh New York at Paul Rosenberg's fucking apartment, sleeping on the floor, eating dollar slices. Shit, we was in Miami at Hock It Up Down conventions. Shit. He even we even went to Freak Nick one time. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. I remember yeah, gritting on Greyhound. One time we got on the Greyhound bus, and he had a fucking trash bag. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have a suitcase. Damn, you know this is a trash bag. Yeah, man. We was out grinding, man. And then, like, that's the game I kind of taught him. I taught him the traveling game. Gotcha. But he knew, M knew the retail game, though. He knew the retail shit. Like, he he was going into these, to these, uh, these record stores and, you know what I'm saying, doing consignment slips on his, on his own. Like, checking his, his data, seeing how much sold shit. He was, he was doing that. Damn. So, he, you know, he taught me some tricks. Like, we used to do this one thing where we used to go and, uh, in the record time. So, record time. Like, so all these record stores, they have a section that say local, local section. Okay. So we was like, you know, we didn't like, he ain't like that. So we would go take all the Eminem CDs from the local section and then just go put it in the East. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, just a little slick shit yeah. like that. I, you know, I learned. I, I, le- I learned a lot from, from Eminem Proof about, like, you know what I'm saying? So when- Proof, I, I learned how to be a man. Mm. And M, I learned a lot about 
record book. What, what did Proof show you? What did you? How did you learn to be a man from Proof? What was the lesson he taught you? Proof was Proof was just sturdy, man. He was he was solid, man. You know what I'm saying? Like when um when I used to see him at the hip hop shop, I thought he was just a backpacker. You know what I'm saying? You know he he had dreads. He was he was a vegetarian. You know what I'm saying? Like he. He was very, you know, laid back, and cool. So I, I didn't really know he had a, a gangster <laughs> side to him. Till yeah. I started hanging out with him, and you know, he started throwing. I'm like, damn, this nigga everywhere. He had the outcast. He, he just, <laughs> he just that place. But I remember one incident in particular. Me and Proof was on the east side, and you know, I'm from the west side. So yeah, once we cross Woodward, I don't know where the fuck I'm at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Unless we on Eight Mile. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I cannot wait my way on Eight Mile, but. You start talking about charmers and dickers and all, I'm lost. Yeah. So me and Proof, we young, we over these chicks' house on the east side. And uh we hear a big ass banging at the door, like, boom, 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 boom. Like, what the fuck? You know, we getting all scared and shit. And then the girl, she go to the window, she looked at the peephole, she's like, Oh my god, it's my it's my boyfriend. It's my boyfriend. Proof like, what? It's like it's my boyfriend. She's like, Y'all go in the basement. So we go in the basement. I looked through the peephole again. I seen he had about 10 niggas with him. I'm like, damn. So they knock it again. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, Shh. she's like, hey, I got to let him in. They gonna keep, they, he ain't going away. He don't keep knocking. So I'm like, damn. So she's about to open the door. So her homegirl was like, hey, hey, I'm going to let y'all out through the side door. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to go through the side door before you open it. So I'm like, all right, cool. So she opened the side door. So as soon as she opened it, I kind of like start trotting to the car a little bit. <laughs> Proof was like, hey, 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 nigga, slow down. Slow down, nigga. You ain't going to run. We going to walk to the car. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we walk to the car. And, and that was like some real man life and shit. Like, you know, I understand the situation is dangerous. You know what I'm saying? And we trying to get out of this bitch. But we going to win no hole. We going we gonna to walk with some pride. Got you. And that's so, when you felt like you became a man. Yeah, like, I became a man because you know they got they got the whole crew is from the east side. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Oh, so you the only west side? Yeah, me, me and Swift. We don't you Swift. Okay. From the west, so the whole crew from the west side, and basically we spent eighty percent of our time on running air. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that that was our hangout spot. So eighty percent of the time we was on we was on running air. So gotcha. I got to know east side niggas very well. Very well. You know what I'm saying they 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 completely different from us. In, in, in what way? Um, family. They more family orientated. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they. You know what I'm saying? They. I think they they handle shit differently. Like you know, I'll make a comparison. Like, if you know, if if we at a club and I'm with ten West Side niggas, you know, and we got some beef with some niggas, and it's thirty of them and it's ten of us. Shit, we gonna make some phone calls. Like, hey, hey, bring the chopper, man. Hey, cuz, come with this. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? And we gonna play it off and then, you know what I'm saying? Just chill until niggas say, hey, I'm outside. Then we'll get to acting up. Got you. But east side niggas, man, they fighting regardless of the numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's if I'm with six east side niggas and they see 20 niggas, they gonna be like, all right, cuz, we gonna, we gonna get back to back. They do this shit where they get back to back. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, they had the, I seen this done before. Like, <laughs> the niggas get back to back or they get against the wall and they get the, you know what I'm saying? Get the plan and go, all right, niggas, you know? And then afterwards, they talking, yeah, man. See, I get that nigga like, right, man, I like that nigga out. Like, this is what they do. <laughs> so, you know, they ain't running, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they coming, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of the numbers and shit. So, got you. So, here it is back. You get that phone call, Marshall, signed with Dr. Dre. You quit your job immediately. Yeah. Do you tell your mom, like, I'm going to L.A.? Yeah. So my mom, I said, Mom, I'm moving to L.A. I'm out of here. Marshall just got signed. And my mom was kind of used to it by then of me just um, leaving. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Like, I, I would go to DJ Head. Me and him would go to New York for a week. She knew she knew I was leaving. She just always used to say, boy, you are... Well, you got two dollars in your pocket trying to go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that was that was, you know, I, I was out, man. She was, you know, she my mother was always supportive, man. It's just that she couldn't she'd be my manager at first. Okay. I was like a little bow wow, man. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for real. I, I was I, Two things I was known in the hood for. I was known for rapping and walking on my hands. Okay. I was a walking on my hands champ. Okay, nobody fuck with me and walking on hands. Can you still walk on hands? I got to drop about 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I need about two. Give me a couple months. Yeah, you got know what I'm But I used to be able to walk down whole blocks, bro. Damn. I used to be able to do circles. I can walk up steps. I can walk and touch my hands. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's the two things I was known for. So, uh, you know, people start telling my mama like, yo, yo, you know, your son got a little gift, man. You know, you need to Put him on Star, Star Search. Him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh I think I did like a couple uh a couple uh churches. Mm. Uh I did a couple performances. And I was getting in, let me tell you that. I was getting in these venues with the Dr. Martin Luther King rap. Mm. That's 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 basically all they wanted to hear. So my mother was using like this positive message to to get me shows type shit. So when did you fire as your manager? Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I guess when I when I started getting older, my, my mom. Uh, one day we was, uh, you know, we was chilling, and uh, some people had knocked on our door, and uh, it was it was it was uh, Jehovah Witnesses. So my mother, uh, she started studying with the Jehovah Witnesses, going to the Kingdom Hall, and then basically her life changed. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So she she wasn't even really mom wasn't really with the rap no more. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Yeah, especially the type of shit I was doing. I went from Dr. Molly the King to being the, the sickest rapper in the world, man. This is the wild shit. Um, with your style, though, because I kind of see what you, how you rap and, and your style and the content, how you, you could take some wild shit and some comedic shit and yeah. some real shit and put it together. When you listen to people from Flint, rappers yeah. from Flint right now, right. you know, BFB, Pac-Man, Coochie Crew, all of them, it's like they saw some wild shit, right. but they had a comedic element, and it, but they be spitting bars. Right. Like, was that always the mindset that you want to go with music? Did you start off that way? Yeah, I started off as, as a bizarre kid. So, like I said, that's why it was so hard for me to have a personality, two personalities in D12, because I was already bizarre <laughs> enough. So, I've been saying bizarre and weird shit for 20 years, man. Got you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you, you get to L.A. with Marshall. But shout out to all the niggas from Flint, man. Shout out to R.M.C. Mike. That's my guy. Man. Hey, don't he sound just like Hurt? But R.M.C. Yeah. Mike. He, both of their voices. Sounds, if you ever hear them niggas in person, they both sound like that. Did, Mike definitely. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, Hurt, I, I pretty much, he got, this, you know, he sound like, you know, on his raps. So. Yeah. Yeah, but I ain't, I ain't never, I ain't never thought about that comparison though. Yeah, because like Big Hurt, one of my favorite Detroit uh, rappers. Yeah, that's a good ass comparison. Yeah, yeah. I think Mike might be just a little deeper. A little deeper. Mike on square is heavy too. <laughs> so his voice might be a little deeper than it hurts. But um, okay, so you get out to L.A. Uh -huh. uh, you with um, take me through what was L.A. like watching, you know, saying seeing that process where him go from, you know, this underground battle rap. King, because, you know, he did what, the Rap Olympics? Yeah. Um, we did everything. Freak Nick, Rap Olympics, mm. How Could I Be Down, motherfucking pool party, yeah. <laughs> whatever. You, whatever. Wherever niggas rapping that we there. Outside of y'all, why y'all rapping? Outside of y'all, who do you think was the, the, like, the most key connection that you felt like snowballed everything? Was it the Windy Day or... Um, or anybody? Who do you feel like, yeah, it was yeah, like that? probably... Uh, Wendy Day in the Rap Olympics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The Rap Olympics gave him a, a, a bigger platform. And, and and the Rap Olympics, that it was before that, we we went to a battle in, in Cincinnati, the Scribble Jam. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, this this these things were random. Like back in the day, I guess it's a part about being hip hop. Us being hip hop, we had no boundaries. Like there was never no plan for nothing. So it was like, damn, man, they having a battle uh, tomorrow in Cincinnati. Shit, you can drive? Okay. How, how much gas money we got? Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? And niggas, niggas just literally put their coins together and, and go to a, a battle. So gotcha. that's why the Scribble Jam happened. He just, we just scraped up the money, went to the battle. We didn't even know nothing about the battle. Marshall entered the battle just on some being there type shit. Yeah. And got damn near to the finals. That's when he met Juice. He, you know what I'm saying? he lost the Juice, right? Yeah, yeah, we lost yeah. Juice. Yeah. But that's but Juice was a, if you know, 
that's a big thing to it too. Because yeah. you know, Juice was the the captain of the of the Rap Olympics, so he had to choose his team. Got you, got you. Okay, so here he is y'all out of L.A. right now. When you get there, will you move in with him? Like, do they put him up? Like, how does that work? Yeah, when I when I got there, yeah, they were, he was just staying in Burbank. Okay, uh, at the uh, Oakwood. You know, I think that's that's where they put everybody at. You know, Interscope or these labels. They're probably still doing that shit. But uh, just yeah, a little like, regular apartment. Like it's a apartment go. complex where they they house artists at. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So he was at the Oakwood. Yep, and uh, I just remember like when I well first when I first went there, I stayed there for like three days. Hmm. Maybe a week, but uh, I had got a call from Detroit saying his label was trying to sign me. Mm. So I told him I had to bounce because at that time he was just meeting Dre. So you know his team didn't really know how comfortable Dre would feel with people coming around or whatever with the group. So I just bounced out. He, you know, he asked me to stay, but I told him I was like, "Yo, bro, you got it. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got to get it, man. I don't, you know." He got to spread out because that was the plan. Everybody spread out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And whatever he come back and got. So I headed to Detroit. Um, and started my album, Attack of the Weirdos. So you get to Detroit, you sign your deal, Attack of the Weirdos. What? You said about independently, about 30,000 units yeah, or so? Yeah, yep. Uh, it came out through uh, Federation hmm. Records. Shout out to my man Rico of Ipsy, AMF. Shout out to my... Uh, so, um, yeah, that was, that was my first first album. It came out independently. It had M on it. Okay. So that was a plus. I had the Outsiders on there. So I had the formula. I had M on the song. I had the Outsiders on the song, which is, uh, you no, know, that was pretty pretty banging at the time. Yeah, for and sure. Then, and then I had a J Dilla beat. Mm. I had to, I ain't even tell you how I got that proof. Say, yo, <laughs> I might have something for you. I said, what? I said, he said, I got a J Dilla beat. Now, anything, if anybody know anything about Proof, Proof had a million Jay Dilla beats that he had let you hear. But you can rap on that motherfucker if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They can call Jay Dilla. Jay Dilla would be like, hey, I sold that to Janet Jackson last week. Like, damn, fuck. But yeah, he told me he had a beat for Jay Dilla and he sent me the beat. And uh, I'm like, okay. It just didn't sound like a, a powerful. Yeah. Killer J Dilla beat that I'm used to. So I had I had Dilla up. I'm like, yo, Dilla. He's like, what's up? I was like, yeah, man, uh, you sent me a beat. And if you know the thing about Jay Dilla, he got real dry humor and shit. So I, I said, you sent me a beat. He said, yeah, yep, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, nigga, that's it. <laughs> nigga, you get one beat. Nigga, you gotta do something with it. So I was like, oh, shit. Okay, I get it. So then I just... I did the best I could and I made this song called Butterfly. Okay. And so I had that formula. So I had sold like 20,000 units. Damn, that's dope. You know, just independently. And I, and I was selling vinyl too. So, mm. you know what I'm saying? I, I was killing it. So here it is. You, you running your circuit. Um, Slim Shady drives. Right. Were you prepared? Did you see that it was going to go the way that it went? Um, yeah, once I seen how my name is, mm. you know what I'm saying, and the, you know, yeah, I seen it, but just watching it from the from the, in the ghetto was like, damn, you know, it just it just brought chills down your spine because like he and Cali, we in the in in the D in the trenches, like, damn, bro, this this shit really happened, this yeah, shit, shit really banging, yeah, so it was definitely surreal. Man. So him, so when he doing like the MTV, he start doing his like his run and everything with Slim Shady and how my name is. Y'all not traveling with him to all these places. Nah, nope, 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 uh, nope, nope, not at, not at first. Why not? Because like today, usually when an artist get on, his crew going with him everywhere yeah. he go. I, well, I, you know, M had a lot, a lot of preparation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like he was down with Dre and them, so it was. If it's it's structured to their shit. You know what I'm saying? You got just, you. It ain't just open with just packing niggas could you know what I'm saying? Like Dre, you know, they ain't really buying that type of shit. But what he got a chance to start bringing us out. Hell yeah, yeah. We we was on it. Oh. We went straight we went straight to private planes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Actually I think he was kind of spoiled. But I was you know what I'm saying, I had grinded already. So, you know, I yeah. seen dirt, but like 
But when we got signed, we we didn't regularly. We went straight to private plane. Straight to private. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Now, so, he could have put us on commercial, <laughs> but you know he wanted he wanted his crew with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, here it is. Okay. Y'all in the trenches, you seeing them everywhere. Was mm-hmm. there ever a fear that y'all was gonna get forgotten? Um kinda. You know what I'm saying? Just just the fear of not, you know, not not the fear that he was gonna leave us. It was more of a like, damn, man. You know, just our lives, like, damn, man, we he in LA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He damn, he doing this, damn, we we are here in the trenches. So just that element was was scary. But like, as far as like communication, talking to us and all that shit, yeah, he he stayed in contact. He was just, it was like your proud cousin that you know. Yeah. Remember back in the day, niggas used to be oh, Scotty Pippen, my cousin. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it was like he he was in LA. So it was like he would come here like once a month or whatever. Like, everybody would meet him down at St. Andrews. All yeah. of us would hang out. You know what I'm saying? We just really enjoyed his time. He was like a hero to us. So, no. you know. So, why he, his album going crazy, when was the last time y'all had did music as D12 or as the Dirty Dozen? Um, we was still recording. Okay, so y'all was still, he yeah. had sent records in here. Yeah, so we was still recording. So, I basically took took over. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, so Proof had moved to, moved to uh, New York. With Marsh Malone. Okay. And uh and basically uh I had a tack of the weirdos out. So I had uh I had the brigade, you know what I'm saying? They was doing shows with me. Like we had a they was on my album, Attack of the Weirdos. Gotcha. So, which is Vine and I mean Vine and uh Mr. Porter. So uh yeah, we was doing um we was doing shows and then Bugs was in the group. Bugs is my hype man. So basically damn near half the group was with me. So then, when Proof came back from New York, he joined back up with us at Game 5. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, how Swift got in the group was that Bugs, um, the day before he passed away, I was on the phone with him, and he was like, yo, remember Swifty from the Rabies from the hip-hop shop? I said, yeah, I remember Swift. He said, yeah, man, me and him been hanging out lately, bro. You know what I'm saying? He got some shit. We should think about putting him in the group. Hmm. I'm like, all right. I was like, we, we, we'll talk about it when we, when we get there tomorrow. And uh, we got there. He Bugs had passed away. Damn. That was his last request before he died was to put Swift in it. And Swift brought Conniver? No, no. Swift didn't bring nobody. He brought his oh, oh. Bugs brought him in. Okay, Bugs brought yeah. him in. So how did Conniver get in the group? Conniver? Uh, Conniver, he got in the group because uh, when we was picking up the pieces, getting everybody back together, um, the nine, you know what I'm saying, which mm. is legendary producer. Yeah, he we asked him like, yo, we, we about to put these twelve back together, man. You know, you know, you down or what? And he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll fuck with it, but only on one condition though. He was like, what? He was like, got to put my homie in the group. And proof was like, what? Well, he got to battle bugs. So we made bugs and Conniver battle mm. like, ten rounds. Got you. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's how I come out of regard. Now, you, you know the running joke where D12 is. Oh, shit. The, the right. two unknown, <laughs> <laughs> the two unknown, like, we don't, you never know the other two nigga name in the group. Okay. So, is is that, can, who is who are they talking about? Conniver and Deny? Are, are they the ones that everybody feel like you just don't know nothing about them? Uh, well, uh, Conniver and Deny grew up together. Mm. And it's, it, you know, they got the same lingo. They kind of raised in the same, you know, yeah. hood. They used to live together. <clears throat> so sometimes them niggas used to be together. Like, I definitely thought they was twins. They <laughs> like, they sit together yeah. on a plane. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, uh, they was kind of confusing. But, like, Swift is very distinctive. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, I, you know, other than that, I don't know. But I guess, you know, you can't forget me. Oh, for sure. Fat nigga with a shower cap on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I stood out. Hell you know yeah. Um, so, M assembles y'all together. Y'all get the call, hey, we're going to sign D12. Yeah, well, first, first I was signed solo to Shady. Yeah. Yeah, and Proof was uh, about to sign the Aftermath. Mm. And then uh, uh, we decided just to 
do the group first. You know what I'm saying? So then we we put the group, you know what I'm saying? Sign the group as a, you know, as a label to the uh, solo shit. So then y'all dropped the album. The title album was? Devil's Night. Devil's Night. And for people who don't know, I know what Devil's Night is because I remember the curfews with the cars riding around the city yeah, with the yeah, yellow lights. Yeah, yeah. Get your ass in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everybody try to change that shit. Angels night. Yeah, shit. it was that like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but for those outside of Detroit who may not understand Devil's Night okay. in the city, um, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of explain it to them. Uh, Devil's Night is uh, October 30th, day before Halloween, where niggas just basically fuck up the city, you know, <laughs> egg, but you know, that's what we do. We used to egg houses. Yeah. Man. But some niggas let, let fires to abandoned houses, like just just wild out, might go some. I guess the purge before the purge. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, if you think about it, that shit really is like yeah, that. Yeah, it was the purge before the purge. Yep. That's crazy. Uh, that shit yeah. is wild. Like now I'm thinking about it, I'm sitting back as a kid. Yeah, because think about it, because that's remember they they even went as far as to make Angels Night. Yep. And I remember people used to volunteer with they Little, yep. A little siren on they, uh, and they car. Yeah, they used to ride around <laughs> patrolling, looking for motherfuckers and shit. That's how out of hand that shit got. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So y'all dropped Devil's Night. Um, of course, you know, one of my favorite songs on there is uh, Purple Pills. Okay. Did you, are this, is this all new music that y'all end up creating? What y'all got with Dre? Or is this music that y'all had in the tuck? No, everything was on the spot with Dre. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. All that fight music and all that shit. We yeah. All was in LA. Yeah. Because that production, I guess sonically, that shit yeah. is crazy. That was, that, was, that was the first thing that I was just blown back about Dre's, like how sonically, mm -hmm. like just to see how he create in the studio with, you know, with all the musicians sitting there and he just got the ADAT running. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, they get the jam and some shit and he just jump in on the MP. But it's, his the speakers are so loud that his, his snare is like piercing your ear. You know what I'm saying? So you just hearing shit like, you know what I'm saying? Like, God damn, like his quality is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He used to they say he used to go through like three or four pair of speakers a week. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just remember that. You know what I'm saying? I wonder how his hearing is now. Oh man. He tax your yeah. ears like that for so yeah. long. That was a lot of pressure, man. Just imagine, just imagine being in the studio with Dr. Dre and Eminem, and yeah. you up next to grab in the booth, and everybody looking at you. Depression, man. Oof. Was, was Scott Storch over there? Yeah, yeah he was, was over there. Yep, smoking his joints and shit <laughs> with his cool glasses on, cocaine shades. <laughs> <laughs> what was a young so Scott Storch like? Just like you see him, man. It's like he didn't really say too much, man. man you know, me and him just chop it up because he had. Yeah, we dog used to have literally damn near 30 joints rolled. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, man, him used to smoke, but uh, shit, he was just really there doing his job, smoking with the shades on and get on that keyboard when Drake, you know, making them beats with Dre and shit. Got you. Okay, so here come the, the album comes out, go crazy. What y'all sell, like 4 million? I think it's like 4 million, four yeah. million copies. Yeah. Um, it's like everything now, the Eminem, Dre touch, pop off. Um, I think you stole the show even more so. Of course, when 50 came out, and we had to kind of touch on that a little bit, when he did the upside down shit, but then you re you redid his shit on yeah. the parody and you dropped down with the shower cap. Yeah. That's how y'all fuck with Bizarre. Right. Hey, hey, bro, <laughs> fat niggas is in, we here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you from the crib, I was fucking with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, take me to that video. Like, how, how did you, was that your idea? Um... I ain't hundred percent sure. It was my IT and I was uh, that was a long time ago, but I definitely was uh down to do it. Yeah. And I remember uh we was going over the the like the the way we was gonna do it with the producer or whatever, and then they was like, yo, I'm not for sure. I think it might have been the same producer who who did 50 video. I'm yeah. not for sure. But I remember we was going over the logistics of it, and they was like, yo, um, 50 really dropped down, you know what I'm saying, with, uh, you know, we had them hanging off, off the straps and shit, and, and, like, we had to keep, like, lowering them down, like, every 30, 20 minutes, you know, he was getting sick, he was having headaches, shit. Whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. so, I was like, you sure you want to do it like that? 
So I was like, ah, nah, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that. So they did mine with a green screen. Mm. So I'm not actually hanging upside down. You standing up, but you got yeah, everything else yeah, up. But 50 really did hang up. <laughs> hey. And they really did at the Super Bowl, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. <laughs> oh, they was trying to tell my yeah, dude, my yeah. man 50 up. Yeah, my, my, my timeline was blowing up, man. <laughs> my timeline was blowing up, man. <laughs> damn, that, I was like, yeah, man, we didn't know you was performing at the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, nah, like, bro. Damn, nigga, I ain't know what I was either. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is, boom, D12 out of there. When did y'all, when you came out to LA and D12 was going, did you already know a 50? Like, how did y'all come in? How did you get to know 50 or start hearing his name? Uh, I start I start hearing his name through uh, his uh, M security. Mm. So M, M had one security guard. That was from Jamaica Queens, BO. And basically, he just he just started putting his team on. So mm. we would do tours, it'd be like eight security guard niggas all from Jamaica Queens. So uh they start pumping 50. You know what I'm saying? And playing the mixtapes and shit. So we used to be hearing them in the dressing rooms and on the road and shit. That thing I know, uh M, M signed it. That's crazy. So here come 50. Cause like I mean, of course, hip hop can always have beef for sure. At that time, we just got past the big divide or the big schism, East Coast versus West Coast. Um, you know, Biggie and Pop gone. Um, and so Death Row is only a shell of itself, but Dre reinvents himself after math going stupid. So y'all out there doing y'all thing in the rap rap game, the dangers. How much of a the danger effect did 50 Noom add to the element once he got there? Did you feel like, okay, we just Detroit cats, we ain't scared of danger, we moving around, we used to bullshit. But when 50 Noom come along, do you feel like it was crazy? Because he was beefing with everybody. Yeah, danger went up like from one to a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> not because, you know, not because we ain't from the streets, you know what I'm saying? It's because... We had a white fan base, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So we, after, you know, after our shows, we used to go on the rave parties and white people getting drunk and, you know, popping ecstasy pills, and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what, that's what we're, you know, this is our fan base. But when Fifth came along, it was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? He brought the niggas. <laughs> niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, Fifth used to come with like 50 niggas with him, you know what I'm saying? Like. Different cars, all type of shit. Then we had to start wearing them bulletproof vests. I hated that shit. Who told y'all to put the bulletproof vests on? We had to. We had meetings about it. Like, yo, this shit, you know, shit getting rough. Got to start wearing bulletproof vests, bullet, bulletproof cars. And my big fat nasty ass, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> last thing I, I used to be taking my shit off, like, blah, 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 you ain't got your vest on. I'm like, man, I'm hot. <laughs> fuck it. If I get shot, I get shot. I don't give a fuck. Nigga, this vest out to the motherfucker. What's an incident, if you know of, that created the meme? Like, all right, everybody got to start wearing this shit. Uh, I mean, shit, you know, Proof proof and uh, proof and Scott Storch had an incident in Miami. Mm -hmm. And uh, Proof was down there on, on the low with Scott Storch and a, a, a little scuffle happened at uh, one of those strip clubs with uh, Murder, Inc. Mm -hmm. and, they got, and he got up on Proof, so... After that, it was like, okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got to take this shit serious. So, so just because of his association with 50. Yeah, this is, that's that's how it was, man. What no niggas ain't choosing. You know what I'm saying? Shit, even Obi Trice had to tighten up. Damn. All of us had to tighten up. You know what I'm saying? We had to watch where we go. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you catching the, you know, what, what do a lion do? He he, he sit back and he, and he, and he, he observe a herd. And then he go out there and he take off and then he bite the wheat. Yeah. The, the, the stray, the little, the one that's going away from the, so. The fly, yeah. Anybody that, you know what I'm saying, was straying away from the click, trying to do some solo shit, you know what I'm saying? And niggas, like, they catch your ass, they on your ass. Damn. Did they get down on Proof and Scott's pretty bad? Uh, no, you know, Proof, Proof a warrior. Yeah. They used to this shit. Proof he's fight every weekend in Detroit. So, you know, he, oh, them niggas ain't do shit, man. Blah, 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 blah. I got a couple scratches, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> long as he good, I'm good. Bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but, 
yeah, man, we had to, you know, had to take shit serious. I mean, we was there. A lot of them incidents was happening. So yeah, as as much as fifty downplay Ja Rule and all of them, it was really serious though behind the scene. Oh yeah, it was serious with everybody. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. Fifty a real street nigga, so you know, it was up. You know what I'm saying? So they, you know, you know, our loyalty being from Detroit, we with you, we with you, we so with you. A lot of the shit we understand. You know what I'm saying? We from Detroit, so we ain't really understand shit. You know, we ain't understand a lot, a lot of shit, but we just stayed out the way. So, so y'all assume fifty shit that he got going on in New York, and you gotta assume Dre shit that he got going on in Cali. Mm-hmm. We should. And all of them, man. Kind of tell me your your run ins with Shug. Uh, shit. <laughs> uh, it was just a, a couple of incidents, man. Like I said, we, by us being from Detroit, we didn't really understand it. Uh, only incident I really remember is is I heard Tony Ayo talk about this on uh, I think the Drink Champs. Drink Champs, yeah. But uh, from my point of view, it was my birthday. We was in Vegas, and uh. Somebody called my uh, hotel room. Was like, "Yo, Suge Knight downstairs." I'm like, "Where?" And we like little kids calling them. Hey, Suge Knight downstairs. So we all calling each other. So I guess we kind of went down there like on some, like, let's damn Suge Knight. Let's go see Suge Knight. So when I walked down there, I didn't know proof was down there though. But we, when we <laughs> walked down there, we see proof and Kid Rock. Kid Rock is with proof. And actually, Kid Rock is the one who introduced Suge to uh, proof. And uh, we down in there, and I remember <laughs> Shug was sitting there, and uh, shout out to Dolo, our security. <laughs> Dolo, he walked past Shug Knight, looked him up and down, then looked at us and said, man, that nigga ain't even that big, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember, like, he, I just remember the look on Shug Knight's face, like, these niggas, who are these little niggas? Like, what the fuck out like, like, how they just... You know what I'm saying? Because it's not we ain't press him, but we yeah. was up on him. Then uh, I guess you know he asked he asked proof for a handshake. Proof was like, "No, nah, nigga, you kill pot." <laughs> but proof was on that juice though. He was dirty hairy that night. You Is know it? what I'm saying? So damn. You know, so so proof. If, if anybody know proof, we know who dirty hairy is. You know what I'm saying? So that's his alter ego when he's souped up. Yeah, when he's souped up, he, he dirty <laughs> hairy. So. Dirty Harry didn't feel like talking to Suge that night, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's just what it was. So, so he really told this man, "I ain't shaking your hand." Man, I ain't shaking your hand, nigga. You killed pot. Damn. So you got my man saying, I "Ain't shaking your hand because you killed pot." You got other niggas saying, "This nigga ain't that big." Like he's just like, "What the <laughs> fuck is he? <laughs> Who is these niggas?" <laughs> man, shout out, shout out, shout out to Dolo. Are these incidents? Is this after? Like the Source Awards incident? No, that's, was, no, that's just like way after that. That's way the after. Source Awards, we weren't, we weren't really in the industry like that. Got the Source you. Awards, I was just there. Got and you. And just seeing Suge come in with a bunch of niggas and niggas start running, scattering, taking off. So it was like, you know, I was, you know, I guess we was always niggas that didn't take off and was like, why everybody running? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We didn't, we understand what was going on. So, was he that much of, because, were you were you there when at the the, the fifty cent video shoot? Yeah, I was there too. But Take me again, through that. Again, it was like a a, a movie, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all I can say, man. I'm I'm at the bar, game next to me. We all doing this bar scene, you know what I'm saying? Because that's that's the scene we was in. Yeah. So we doing the scene, and then I'm, and then somebody like, hey, Shug, Shug here. You know, and I see Shug come in. He had all Mexicans with him, and uh, he had his glasses on. And the music stopped, and Fifty asked the nigga, "What's up? What you want to do? Like, like a movie, man? I'm <laughs> dead serious. Like, what you want to do?" Shug looked, took a hit of his cigar, blew out the smoke, did the little wave to tell the niggas to turn around, and they left. So, I guess he was there to try to intimidate us. Mm. Yeah, I mean, but what did he want? Uh, just simply intimidation. <laughs> That's it, man. I'm here. <clears throat> that's a lot of shook it's a lot of shook so like basically I'm here I can get you whenever I, I mm. want to get you you're not safe you know what I'm saying I could just pop up at your video shoot and look at you and turn around and you know you never know where yeah. I'm gonna be next yeah I don't yeah. know man I don't understand the shit, <laughs> like man. the spookles <laughs> <laughs> I got you yeah. um, 
Okay, so here it is, 50 going off. You, you just said the game. Were you surprised when game and 50 end up start beefing? Uh, I, I, to honestly, <laughs> to be honest, yeah, I was surprised because I, I, you know, I don't know their politics. I, I, I really had no recollection of like their relationship or how close they were, or whatever. So, yeah. Whenever you see any anybody from the team that's start beefing with each other, you know, you are gonna be a little concerned. But I mean, cause y'all all enjoying like major success. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, what I don't no game like that. I just seen him a couple of times. You know okay, I saying? got you. I got Not you. Not really a lot of conversation, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm with closer to fifth. Got you. Yeah. So when you saw Gang recent, well, not recent, but in the last two years when he dissed him. Yeah. Oh, he's calling himself the Blysom? What do you call himself? Was he calling himself uh, the Blysom? When he was kind of like dissing like some shady, Yeah. 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 And yeah. He was rapping like Marshall. Yeah. But kind of dissing Marshall. Yeah. How, did it, how did you take it? Did you just take it like hip hop? Hip hop. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I. You know, game be dissing everybody, man. So yeah. I don't even I don't even take game serious when it comes to, to dissing niggas because, you know, I think he just I don't know. Maybe maybe look at it as as a competitive thing, but I would say as as a battle rapper, I would say this that uh I got kinda lost when he did like his style the whole three verses. Mm. I thought maybe he had Get off of it for twelve bars, go to something else, and yeah, you know that's just as a at a comp- competitive way. I thought, you know what I'm saying, but so I just on some battle rap shit. I'm on some my mind's work because M never responded. No, I wouldn't have responded either. Yeah, did you ever have a conversation about it? No, nah, we ain't, no need to. No need to. No, nah, no need to. You think no M to. don't hear stuff, right? But it seemed like he see everything. Shit, man, it's the internet days, man. Everybody see everything. Yeah. Yeah, everybody see everything. But it was like one of those ones. Like, I feel like when I hit you up, when uh-huh. we talk to each other, I know it's you. I feel like yeah. you look at him, you'll feel like he probably don't even run none of his shit. Why? But he probably got a Fista account. You, you got a burner account on there, so he's seeing it. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> you man. know, man. What's that's, up? That's, that's mystery, man, there, <laughs> man. All that man care about, all I can say this, all he care about is music, man. Yeah. Really, like the shit. Like, if I if I want to see him, I gotta go to the studio. Yeah. You know, talking on the phone and shit. Like, he really loves the studio, man. Every day, get up like it's a job, nine to five, drive there itself. He put the work in. Like he, like other, like it's it's really hard to keep his attention on, you know, nonsense. Got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? So if I see him and I'm kicking it with him, the last thing I'm thinking about talking about is nonsense. Got you. You know what I'm saying? So we we might be talking about the Lions more than, than you know what I'm saying, something that happened in the streets. Got you. Yeah. So, well, so, but still on the nonsense. Damn. Machine Fucking gun cannon. <laughs> what are we here for the nonsense? <laughs> what did you think about the Machine Gun Kelly back and forth? I think he forth? did better than game. Yeah. I think he did better than game. Yeah. Who I feel like that battle was kind of like almost a battle of generations, right. like two different generations. Like, well, it's almost like the 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 ultimate the the great father who was a hooper and his son picking up the ball and ready to try to right. beat dad. This guy kind of feel it. I don't feel like, of course, Machine Gun Kelly is nowhere near Lim M on a lyrical, but I feel like this generation. Kelly did well for his generation to cheer him on because mm-hmm. the style that M do, the younger generation may not understand. Just like when people say LL was the, the right. greatest rapper. But when I hear it, I'd be like, well, he don't sound like Eminem to me. Right, right. Like to see he's saying is hard bars, but right. I think a complicated shit when I hear hard. Right. You ain't gonna, be, you ain't gonna keep disrespecting LL, man. I mean, no. It's, <laughs> it's, I was just saying, it's, it's just a generational thing. <laughs> Because now my generation, if I bring up Eminem to the NBA Young Boys and yeah, all of them, so they sitting here like, hell yeah. no, ain't nobody yeah. listening to Eminem. Yeah, like my daughter, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah, so KLG felt like he he held his own. He did all right. Uh, who was KLG? Um, I'm a Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, you said KLG. KLG. Was that? No, I said Kels. Who else we got to take out? Kels. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he did better than game. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm going to say about him. Okay. 
For to sure. Get rid of the gang. Um, right now in the music space, uh, well, Proof ended up passing away. Yeah. Uh, take me through the night uh, when Proof passed away. Uh, Proof passed away. Got a call at like 4.30 in the morning. I was in Atlanta. They told me he passed away. And um, well, I got that call, then I got another call saying I was a suspect. Mm. Like, what the fuck, huh? So here I am trying to take all this shit in. My homie just passed away. And they said I'm a a suspect or a person of interest. Got you. So um my phone call blowing up. Everybody like, even my uncle called me. You know what I'm saying? He a Detroit police officer. He's like, yeah, yeah, nephew hit me up, man. Your name all on the scanner. You know, they're looking for you. I'm like, what the fuck? So uh there was a lot of shit going through my head, man. So uh, basically, I guess how my name got in the mix is whoever dropped proof off at the hospital when um, he was passing, you know what I'm saying? They asked him what their name was, and they told him my name. Mm. So that's how my name got thrown in the mix. But I was in Atlanta at my crib, so yeah, it was it was it was fucked up. It was surreal. It was it was surreal because you know. Proof was moving in a way that he usually don't move. Like, mm-hmm. He ain't have Dolo with him. You know what I'm saying? He ain't have Firstborn with him. Them, them his two, them his two shooters. Yeah, I ain't never seen him go nowhere without them. So it was just, it was, it was a weird night. Man. Yeah, and that, that that began to fracture everything because D12 was it, his baby. This is yeah. he put uh, together. Yeah. It was his baby, like, and he was a big brother of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like a lot of things that that we probably did when 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 he was alive, niggas probably when they did it, niggas when they did it when he was alive. Mm. Like in, as far as the group, just a little minor shit. Like when proof was alive, like wasn't no missing no shows, but no missing no shows. Like Rod and been like at shows, nigga, damn near. Okay, I'm gonna get on stage. I'm going to wrap this shit, and then when I'm finished, pull the car up, and we're going to take me to the emergency room. Yeah. Because that's how bad I'm feeling right now. Damn. We got to do this show. So niggas kind of pride of themselves on, like, not missing no shows. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when it came to the publishing aspect, like, Proof believed that we all should be uh, basically equal on publishing. So yeah. it don't matter if you wrote the chorus and rapped, nigga, we all split this publishing equal. Yeah. Yeah. And so that happens, that fracture the group. Y'all try y- y'all did try to make attempts to try to keep it going a yeah, little yeah, bit, but sure. it just it couldn't it wasn't the same. No, it just wasn't the same. No. Mm. To me personally, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's like a replica of it. You know? Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, I know that uh, we was all doing solo projects. You know what I'm saying? We was all solo rappers. So it's like, sometimes to me, just going out with just three of us, is just like, long live proof. But yeah. me, I know proof will probably want us to grow. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Not just like, just be the tell all, be all. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, now, what else is y'all about to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just, you know, felt like it, you know, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't the same, so. Now that y'all, because I remember M dropped kind of a verse kind of explaining why he won't do the D12 thing no more. He kind of yeah. done with it. Y'all relationship now, like, if you wanted an M verse, is it hard for you to get it? I ain't, <laughs> if it's hard to give me an M verse on what? Yeah, like, if you doing a record, you'd be like, man, it'll be hard on this. Oh, yeah, yeah, just shoot it to him. He shoot it to him, he Yeah, it. just shoot it to him, yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, just shoot it to him. Yeah, he got he, he got some shit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's still like that, you know what I'm saying? But, uh... Would y'all ever do a joint album? I don't know, man. That's You the first person I never asked that before. Yeah. That might be something in the works, man. It'd be cool. Yeah. Him and I Royce never thought about that. Got they with Bad Meets <laughs> Evil, what would you name it? I don't know. Damn. I don't know, man. <laughs> 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 you got some bizarre questions, man. Yeah. 
Because you need to bring it back up. What is, sweet Pete? Sweet Pete. Uh, yeah, it's P-E-T-E. Like Pete. 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 Oh, like, not like, Pete. Yeah, like Pistol Pete. Yeah, Pete. maybe you can bring Sweet Pete back. Oh, uh, man. No, I don't want to no, I want to bring that guy back. <laughs> that guy was a lover guy. Love was love. Oh, okay. <laughs> Love, man. Uh, shit, I don't know, man. I know, I know, I know it'd be crazy, though. Yeah, it, it'll be crazy, man. We we end with this. Um, these last two things. Um, I know you got a tour with with Gilly a little bit. Yeah, as he labeled you as one of the was the wackest rappers. Uh, the, the podcast. Did. Podcast. I don't just say him particular. Oh, the podcast did. Yeah, you weren't feeling that. Nah, hell. Why? Why not? Why did it even matter? Um. See, I can't blame it all on him, but it's like basically, like when I seen the episode, it was just like the, the niggas that they was comparing me to. Mm. It was like you know, I feel like it's not even in my league. You know what I'm saying? You'd be talking about niggas that can't even put sentences together, really. So, you know, so I'm like, damn, I'm the bottom of a barrel like that. So. I, I, I took it a little personal, so I hit, I hit Gilly, you know what I'm saying? Because I had a, like somewhat of a relationship with him, but I hit him in the DM and um, asked him like, "What was up with that?" You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my brand. Like, yeah. I'm fucking with like the say I'm the top five worst rapper, and he it, he just left me on scene. He never responded. Damn. So I'm like, okay, I gave you fair warning. Now it's time to get in your ass. <laughs> so I just felt like you know. He was terror talent about battling and shit. So I'm just like, well, shit, let's let's battle. Let's battle rap and see who's better. Yeah. But uh, but you know, I'm off that shit, man. You know, if I say anything, it 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 my new album just just came out, he got a gun. Like basically, I'm taking niggas' heads. Mm. Like, so anything, he he woke a fire up on me. So gotcha. ain't no more playing, it ain't no more laughing and joking with bizarre shower cap. It's just all bars from the like hip hop shop shit. So I ain't I ain't playing with niggas no more. So if you heard my last three singles, you know it's like all yeah. it's all bars. But at the end of the day, man, shout out to Gilly, man. That was some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I was just in my feelings on some shit. And the the bigger message is like, you know what I'm saying? I hope he um Doing well with his, the passing of his son and shit. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, when we get our age, that's what really matter. You know what I'm saying? For sure, because a lot of but people don't make it. young niggas, they'll be, oh, man, fuck that nigga. You know, all that. But, yeah, you know, shout out to Gillian Wallow. Do you think people did look at, so you, when you look back and you saw that top five rappers are worth, I mean, yeah. top five did you feel like really like man? People think because I'm just joking. I have a good time. Yeah, and it's playful. That's, that's what it is. The, the joking and the plan mm. got mixed up in this shit. You see, like even when I used to, when I was in D12 as a character that I played, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. it's like I think you know I know we like everybody just got kind of obsessed with my funny lines. Yeah. So a lot of the lines that I say on records, I say them first, playing, yeah. and, and then I'm gonna be like, yo, put that in the rap. You know what I'm saying? So it was just a lot of punch, a lot of just funny lines. So it got to the point where the funny shit was out wearing the bar shit. Yeah. So, you know, I might say some funny shit like, girl, suck my pussy. Get my <laughs> ass. Bitch, you, you, your pussy was trash. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like you ain't hearing no no punches, no no uh, double syllables. You, you ain't saying, you ain't hearing no, you know what I'm saying? You ain't hearing that. So you probably can get lost in that. Yeah. So I'm like, and it kind of woke me up like, damn, you know, I know disrespect to Fifth Flav, but I, I don't want to go out like a, yeah, like a, you know what I'm saying? A like, caricature. I can, I can really rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I started working on this album called He Got a Gun and I went and found this, this producer named Filemouth and uh, he live in Southwest Detroit and he got, he his studio was in the basement. It's dirty and grimy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, water dripping, cats and dogs running around. And this brought me back to when I was a teenager. Mm. So I started going over there and recording. And he had all the little young rappers coming over there, niggas catching buses and all type of shit. So that brought me back to competitiveness, like when I was young. So I'm getting on the song with all these young niggas. And I ain't about to let, 
these young niggas get in my ass. Yeah. So I'm, you know, saying that thing, you know, man, like, you got me, got who I am now. <laughs> it is now. It definitely in on the last question. Um, what's your relationship now with Joe Budden? Uh, there you, is no relationship. No relationship. No. No relationship. Has it ever been when the Slaughterhouse was there, you and Joe? Mm, nope, nope. Uh we went on tour with we went on tour with Joe. Never say never tour. Um I, I, I thought he was a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? On tour with us. I, I just knew he wasn't my type of guy though. Mm. Guy, some type of guy that I would hang with on a daily basis. Like he he he's more of a like I'm like a dude that like being around a lot of dudes, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. crew, you know, gang shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like smoking blunts, getting high, whatever. And Joe is one of those, why are all these niggas in here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, he he was cool, though, but, yeah, I no 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 type of conversation. Because I know when uh, Elmer had dropped his album, Joe was very critical right. of that album. And you wasn't feeling it. You kind of said some shit back. Of course, Royce, I feel like anytime somebody go at M before M respond, I feel like you and Royce is kind of like his pick. Gatekeepers. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. gatekeepers. Like, y'all, boom, y'all yeah, own it ASAP. Yeah. Why do y'all assume that role instead of allowing Marshall to just respond himself? Uh, Because we know he ain't going to respond. You know what I'm saying? He can't, he can't respond to everything again. Some of the shit just hit passionately. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like, you know, like, you know, y'all, y'all picking on him, or y'all think he ain't got a voice. And like, we, you know, we always been protective of, of Marshall. You mm. know what I'm saying? So it was like, what, like with the Joe Budden shit, I just felt like I, I, I seen you personally there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you been in the system, you been around us. Like, even if you felt like this, you shouldn't say this. Yeah. You got a cold. Like, you don't think D12 ever had arguments or this and that, but you ain't never heard us come out and, and, and diss each other and put diss records out or, or say, fuck him and them. Or yeah. we, we, we solid with that. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I, I probably expect that from other people. Mm. And Royce probably feel the same way. You know, our birthday on the same day. Okay, I know that. So we, we both cancers. So you know, yeah. you don't think about cancers. Cancers are yeah. emotional motherfuckers. <laughs> 50 of cancer. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, 50 is another one that show up for him anytime somebody. Yeah. So you don't look at it, because people sometimes look at it like, especially with him being a white dude, y'all mm -hmm. being black, that y'all shucking and jiving for the white man like oh okay things of that yeah. nature like every time somebody say something they say every time somebody say something about the white boy he never respond and here come his little right, niggas here come his little crew yeah shit he, he been responding on some something you know what yeah. I'm saying you know motherfuckers he did respond to Joe he little smack but you know that's you know that's the god of the rap world Jay-Z yeah. ain't gonna respond to everybody matter of sure. fact I don't even think Jay-Z will respond to Nobody that ever knows. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? So it's just like, man, like, but I, I kind of, I kind of cut back on that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just cause, it's, just cause you said that. But also, though, when we do these interviews, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I can't speak the same for Royce, but you know, when we do these interviews, that's the first thing motherfuckers say. They, you know, they feel like they got to talk to us because they probably will never talk to him. Um, yeah. So they, sure. they come to us with the, so how do you feel about, you know, Machine Gun Kelly? How do you feel about the rappers in Detroit saying the top five? You know, they come to us with all that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they, you know what I'm saying? Well, i tell you what, Bizarre, man. I, I definitely appreciate you coming sit down with me. Oh, man. It was, it was a pleasure. Man. I see you doing your thing, man. Hey, I, <laughs> hey man, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to put on for the city. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I appreciate you. It don't, I, but that one thing... It'd be dope if you jumped in the conscious space, bro, because I could see you being like like the Black Howard Stern, oh, hip hop man. Stern with some yeah, wild yeah. shit. Yeah, I, I want to do it, bro. I, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm thinking about jumping in the podcast type of shit, but I just want to do it right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's why I ain't did it. You know what I'm saying. Like I wanna, I wanna know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't want to just, you know what I'm saying. I know it's like you gotta have longevity and shit. I know it's 
yep. it's trials and tribulations and, and making sure microphones right and all yeah. this type of shit. So, you know, I, I want you to look at my shit and be like, man, that nigga bizarre shit was funny. You said, man, that shit was wild. Instead of just like me half assing it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Not not really knowing. Though. Shit, don't overthink it. Just do the shit, bro. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting them all. Fuck it. Put me on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see it, man, until we meet again. All right, that's what's up. Peace.